So at the beginning, it's all about organic social media and using it to build relationships. So when I first got into this, I was buying 70 to 110 houses a year, just off referral, zero wow. ad spend, period. Okay. I was networking three, four, five nights a week. I would talk to anybody who would listen. This is what I do. These are my goals and dreams. What do you do? What are your hopes and dreams? How can I connect you with people in my network to make your life better? That was really what I was doing. And that's how I built my business. Welcome to Stay Paid Real Estate Marketing. Unlock the secrets of success in the real estate world where each episode delivers valuable tips and strategies to elevate your marketing game and help you succeed in both life and business. Brought to you by Reminder Media. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid Real Estate Marketing. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri, and our guest today is Charles Weinraub. Charles is the CEO of Mandalay Holdings and known to most as the handsome home buyer. Mm, if you check what out the a video, brand. You what can, a brand. You can, yeah, you can make your own opinion there. Just check out the video. As a dynamic investor and personality, Charles has flipped over 400 houses, has been featured in numerous real estate industry publications, hosts a popular YouTube channel, and is part owner of SQ4D, a company that is now 3D printing houses out of concrete. Charles, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, man. Really, really appreciate it. Dang, that's crazy. Do you think that's the future of a lot of new home builds is um, 3D printing? Yeah, 100%. Automated construction, whatever it ends up being, but I love the 3D uh, printed construction that SQ4D is doing, but absolutely. I mean, how a, long does a, it take on, on average? Sorry to cut you off there. No, it's okay. It depends on how much of the house you're printing. So, but typically we're looking, the goal is 14 print days. That is crazy now, fast. I saw one of your videos, you built the largest 3D printed home. Is that still stand? Is it still the largest in America, the 3D printed home? Uh, the largest completed one, I completed. believe so. Uh, yeah, so we we spec built it and sold it. So somebody actually lives in it, it's a regular house, it's in Islandia, New York. And the cool thing about what we did versus what anybody else has done is we, we 3D printed the forms, the footings, the foundation, the interior and exterior walls and roofs are up next. That so, is nuts, man. Is it like uh, one and a half times the price of like a normal house or is it around the same pricing or? So the goal is to get it between 25 and 40% cheaper than traditional construction. Get out of here, man. I guess you could because you don't have the labor. You could, be, you know, you have the robots obviously, but, or the printers, yeah. you know, we call them. I just call them robots. So essentially imagine this for a minute, just jump down this 90 second kind of vision of the future. Somebody rolls up, sees a piece of property. They're like, I'd love to put a house there. They put the VR goggles on. All of a sudden they're in the street in front of their house. They're walking in, they're moving walls, they're changing color. They're designing their kitchen. They're ordering furniture, everything in virtual reality. They're done. They click a button literally like 60 days later, there's the house. The machine comes in a little trailer two to three people assemble the machine and it 3d prints 60, 70% of the house oh interior gets finished gosh. and you're ready to go. Yeah. That is going to be nuts. This yeah. whole AI whole revolution where robotics is going, where virtual reality is going is not speaking about the future. I'd love to get your take, right? 2024. I was just at NAR and mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom, right? I know everybody is thinking about the lawsuit, I'm sure, and stuff like that, but NAR is usually a great show. And, and you know, we, it's, there's still amazing people there. We had a great show, but um, there was a lot of, you know, discouraged agents. You could just see it with the market, interest rates, inventory, the lawsuit. What are you seeing for the future? And when you look at 2024, what are you telling agents and not only their mindset, but where to double down to actually get business? So it's all about, it's all about mindset, right? Like nothing but opportunity in 2024. And the thing that, that skilled agents have to understand is when things get shook up and they get shook up really anywhere from three to seven years, all that is, is opportunity, right? So if you're talking about the lawsuit and you're talking about, you know, 0% listings, if I'm an agent, this is what I'm telling all the agents I know, although literally no one's listening to me is <laughs> I'm going all in on it. I am going all in on it to be one of the first people. I'm out there putting content out about buyer brokerage, building the value proposition, building the brand so that when people start searching for this, I'm that person, smart front and center. You know, you, you always want to lead into whatever the change is. Yeah, it's super smart. Are you seeing, like, when you think about, like, lead gen, right? Because this, mm -hmm. our show is a sales and marketing show because Josh and I, we love marketing. Yep. Um, you know, when you think about it in terms of, like, an avenue, are you seeing most of your success come from referrals? Are you seeing it come from paid ads? Like, where are you seeing yep. your deals come from? 
So we, we do everything at this point. So I, I flip anywhere. Now I've been bringing in four to five deals a week on average in this market, oh which is the gosh, most man. that I have ever really done. And we think that in New York, we have the ability to bring in on Long Island alone, anywhere from eight to 15 deals a week. Jeez. Right? Assuming a population of 3 million. People. How are, like, that, where, where are they coming from? What's your kind of funnels in a way? Yeah. So basically to get to that level, you're doing everything at scale. Yeah. So on the unpaid side, it's years of building relationships yep. and organic social media. On the paid side, it's literally everything from mass texting, cold calling, direct mail, okay. PPC, SEO, all kinds of guerrilla stuff. You name it, we do it. And we're constantly testing all the latest technology and all the latest verticals. Are you on like the big platforms or have you strayed away from those like Zillow, uh, homes.com? Are you on any of those? No, I'm sourcing. I would say 99% of the deals are all off market. Um, At this point, 70% of them are direct from seller. No agents, no wholesalers in the middle. Wow. So you have, um, is it ISAs calling like circle prospecting and trying to find inventory basically and asking people if they're interested in selling their home. Yeah. So essentially, I mean, we're obviously targeting distressed sellers, but since this is, this show is geared at agents, I I talked to a lot of agents about this. Very, very simple. So if I'm an agent, um, what I would do is I I would select an area that I want to dominate because it's a lot easier to dominate a town than it is to dominate, you know, all of Long Island or all of a, a particular area. So you do a little bit of due diligence and, you know, please feel free to redirect me if I'm off topic here, but this is what I think is the best system for an agent to come in and market and take over. So what they would do is they would go to their local MLS and they would go and check out the different markets and they would see what the available inventory is in that market. You don't want to build. So there's a town out here called Lindenhurst that I love and always preach about. Lindenhurst has 16,000 houses. So a lot of houses, you need inventory to sell if you're going to take over an area. So you're not going to take over an area with 3,000 houses. It's a lot easier to take over with 15,000. There's more inventory. Then you want to see what the median sales price is. In Lindenhurst, that's $500,000. So on Long Island, that is first time home buyer, going to churn. People are buying those houses. It makes sense. Hmm. Then you want to look at how many transactions have happened in the last six months. In Lindenhurst, it's a little over 100. So what does that tell you? People are buying and selling houses in Lindenhurst. Then you go to Zillow, like you mentioned, and you find the top agent in Lindenhurst or in your particular market, and you see how many deals they've done. You're going to be shocked to see that they've done two, three, four, five, maybe seven at most. You're going to, you're going to print out a picture of this person. You're going to stick it on your bathroom <laughs> wall every morning when you wake up. <laughs> you're going to awesome. give them the death stare and say, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for the crap, right? And then you start infiltrating that area. And then once you do more deals than them, you are officially the number one agent and you could market as such. Yeah, right? that's sick, dude. Yeah, awesome. At, so at the beginning, and again, feel free to tell me to, to pull it back at any moment. You don't have any money, right? When you start, you don't have any money. You have a lot of time, but you don't have money. So what's the progression? Because eventually, once you have money, you trade money for time. hmm So at the beginning, it's all about organic social media and using it to build relationships. So when I first got into this, I was buying 70 to 110 houses a year, just off referral, zero ad spend, period. Okay. I was networking three, four, five nights a week. I would talk to anybody who would listen. This is what I do. These are my goals and dreams. What do you do? What are your hopes and dreams? How can I connect you with people in my network to make your life better? That was really what I was doing. And that's how I built my business. Then what I would do is I would meet these people. I would get their business cards. I would go home. And at the time when I started, Facebook was really big. Instagram wasn't as big. So I would go and find them on Facebook. I would friend request them and I would begin to weave myself into their life in a non-creepy way. So now they've met me, they know what's about. And now they see me popping up all the time. So when they get a house that smells like cat pee, that's freaking hoarded with 300 (laughs) yards of garbage in it. I'm the only person they're going to think of. And that's how it really started. So you buy houses that smell like cat pee, but you're branded as the handsome realtor. Is that that, handsome? Isn't that your your podcast is cat pee 
podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or smells, yeah, like cat piss. <laughs> smells like cat pee with handsome, yeah. <laughs> I love it. No, that's, dude, that's so smart. Well, talk about your social media content, then, because, I mean, you're crushing it. Tw- yeah. uh, 26,000 plus on Instagram, 160,000 plus on TikTok, I think I saw. You got a YouTube yep. channel with 10,000 subscribers. How are you approaching content? Are you looking at it more as a from a local perspective? Is that a, is that a larger audience? Like, how are you approaching content? Yeah, originally I was just catering to the people I wanted to do business with, which is real estate agents, right? But let's say I'm a real estate agent. What am I going to do? The videos that have really caused me to take off are talking about local things. Like Mm. if I put, I always say I laugh. I'm like, I could put out a video that says, do these three things and you'll be financially independent for the rest of your life. Four people are going to watch the video. If I put a video out about the best Italian restaurant in Long (laughs) Island, a half a million people watch, people are killing each other in the comments, and all of a sudden I have 3,000 more followers in the 30-day period. So let's go back to Lindenhurst for a second. If I'm that agent, I'm going out with my phone, and listen, it doesn't need to be elaborate, and I'm making videos all over Lindenhurst. I'm starting a podcast like you two fine gentlemen, and I'm going to interview every store owner, every connector, every political figure, everybody. I'm going to walk around the street with one of those little microphones and say, what's your favorite thing about Lindenhurst? What's your favorite thing about Lindenhurst? What's your favorite thing about Lindenhurst? And I'm going to put all this content out and I'm going to put it out multiple times a day. And all of a sudden I am going to be Mr. Lindenhurst. Like I just walked into a deli to get a sandwich right before this. And the guy's like, Oh my God, you're the cat pee guy from news 12. Like <laughs> People take gas station selfies with me. Like I'm a real celebrity. Like I'm somebody who's not paying that to put a commercial awesome. on TV. Yeah. So it's really easy for a realtor to be that person also, but you got to put in the work. Yeah, it's so good. Um, one of the things that my brother, who's an agent in Virginia, is doing is that a similar concept, and he's using Google to basically starting, you know, he, he's in Lynchburg, Virginia. So he'll go, you know, real estate Lynchburg, and it will start auto, right, putting out what actually people are searching for about Lynchburg yes. real estate. And he uses exactly. that, right, as his kind of content topics, and he'll film a video on that exact search term. And so things like, why is Lynchburg a great place to live? Our house is affordable in Lynchburg, you know, all that type of stuff. I love what you said about almost like a show going down the street at like the, the main street and going, why do you love him? Hint, or awesome. Lindenhurst. That's a great concept. That's a great idea. And when you think of content, I think the important thing is you want to title it in a way that gets people like, I got to see what this is. So you have to go extreme with that. And then it has to be something that has a broad audience. So food is great. Like if you talk about restaurants and things like that, everybody eats. So it's a really big market of people. If you're just talking about like interest rates, it's not exciting. There's not that many people looking at it. But if you really want to get people excited and sharing your content, talk about things that appeal to a broad audience smart. in that area. Yeah, b- very, very smart. So you're running commercials in, in local area, you said, on TV? Yeah, so now if you get into the paid, we're literally doing everything. Yeah, so we're doing TV as well. I'm on News 12. We're about to break out onto all the conservative news stations, Fox Business News, Fox News, uh, MSNBC, all of that. How expensive is that? Like, and you don't have to give your what, what you're paying or anything, unless unless you're comfortable with it. But like, how expensive is it to break into that type of of media? Obviously, at the local level, starting off, and then yeah. as you kind of leverage, like you said, your your money for your time at a, at a larger level. Yeah, no, it's 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 expensive, but it also like it has to make sense. You know, what's your ROI? Like, I think what people don't understand is what return they're supposed to get on their investment for things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, traditional marketing terms, if you're investing a dollar, you need to get between three to $5 per dollar of ad spend. You know, we have a target where we're looking for seven times in a perfect world. We would really love 10 times. So just as long as it converts like that, it, it makes sense. And then once you test it and you see that it converts, you just put more money and more gasoline on it. But That's the tough part about being a real estate agent because, you know, what are the commissions? Like if you're selling a $500,000 house, you have a $10,000 commission, you have a 730 split with your broker, you know, you have, by the time you're done, you're at $6,500. If you're paying, you know, two, three, four, five, ten 10 plus thousand dollars on TV every week, every month, does it really make sense? A lot of times it doesn't. You know, if you're selling luxury 10, 20, $50 million properties, it's a different ball game. So yeah. when you're selling the cheaper properties, you have to go, you know, more gorilla at the beginning. Yeah, it makes so much sense. So, you know, obviously, you know, 2024 is right around the corner. 
Mm -hmm. Um, People are kind of in their heads. You said it all starts with mindsets. When you look at like your life and the things that you've overcome, because I'm sure building a business, you face adversity like the rest of us. What is like your go-to, whether it's a book, a, a mantra for yourself? How do you get yourself in the right zone? For me, it's like, my big thing is I'm, I'm, I'm more afraid of being average than I am of being broke. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what, what's the worst thing that happens? I go back, I live with my mom. She does my laundry, which she did up until like a couple of years ago. Anyway, That's I steal a great food mom. from her. She's like a little Sicilian woman. She cooks her ass off. I'm like, what's the worst <laughs> thing? But for me, if I'm like 130 years old and I'm laying on my deathbed and I'm like, you know what? I didn't give it a shot because I was too afraid I, I would be very disappointed in myself and that's what I don't want. So I, uh, I never had a problem with that. I think what people really need to understand is they have to reinvest in their business, that it takes time to do all of these things and that it's extremely important to just run fast. And if you're living like a modest lifestyle and you have the ability to put money back, like for example, this year I put every dollar I had back into my business to completely reinvent it and to turn this um, turn this thing into a marketing machine so that I can, you know, move forward and separate myself from the business and build all kinds of other things that I want to build. You know, sometimes you have to take a step or two back to take three steps forward. Yeah. Awesome. Charles. I love it. It's like you literally went through the blueprint. I feel like we talk about it all oh, the so time. Good. Find the agent that's dominating in your area. This is how you do it. Become, then do the, local Become the local celebrity. Yeah, absolutely. Gold. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you and follow along with your journey. Perfect. Really appreciate you guys again. This was a blast. Obviously, I'm Charles, a.k.a. The Handsome Home Buyer. I'm on every single platform that you want to um, consume content on. So it's YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera. It's always handsome underscore home buyer and feel free to dm me with any uh questions or anything i'm always happy to help awesome thank you again and thank you all so much for listening you can dive deeper to this episode get the show notes and any of those links that charles mentioned all in one place over at staypaidpodcast.com and if you enjoyed this episode and want to show your support head on over to apple podcast drop us a five-star review and the best way to support the show is to simply let someone know about this episode if you want to get hold of me or luke you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com and of course you can follow us on our journey at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acree, the handsome podcaster. We're going we're gonna to get that handled. No. <laughs> so I'm Luke Acree. Charles, man, amazing stuff. Seriously, here's my action item for everybody listening to this because I want you to implement something, right? He gave you a golden nugget. Most of us don't ever go to the community that we want to be the local celebrity in. We want to be the small town mayor. The person that they go is Mr., you know, Lindenhurst or Mr. King of Prussia, wherever you're located, you need to go to the MLS and you need to see one, how many homes, but more importantly, how many homes actually sold in the last six months? What is the turnover rate? What is the actual inventory that's moving? That's your market share. And then see who is selling those homes. That is an incredible action item that you can take advantage of right now. So you can figure out what homes or what areas that are actually selling homes that you can go after and you can be the local celebrity. Remember the difference between Top producers and mediocre producers in every business. Top producers take action. Take action on that today.